today I effed up by finding the love of my life. And when she went in for the kiss, I gave her a firm handshake. Okay, OP. This is OKOP. Okay, I'm Samuel Bonner. And I'm John Fry. And John, what is like the worst case of you ever like misinterpreting signals from interested women? Oh, man. Your so, lady suitors. Lady suitors. I remember when I was in like seventh grade or so, uh, there was a girl, Nadia. Shout out to Ooh, Nadia. Nadia. Was, you know, I was like, hey, I'm about it. And uh, so I asked her out <laughs> and then she said yes. I was like, oh, great. This is so great. <laughs> And then she came back a day later and she's like, hey, I'm so sorry. I only said yes out of pity and I don't want to be in a relationship. Out of <laughs> yeah. pity. Yeah. Like I mean, she didn't phrase it exactly like that, but it's oh, essentially no. essentially what she meant. I was like, oh, God. What do you even say to that? I tried to convince her. I'm like, no, it's OK. Like we could give it a shot. You know, like, bro, you're a 12 year old boy. You're just like, oh, my gosh. Like if I have the slimmest shot at this like yeah, pretty girl, let me just try it. Let me just go all the way. And in hindsight, it's like. Bro, how are you going to convince someone who just said she got with you out of pity? Like, Oh, man. Oh, gotta man. Love it. Sad. Well, <laughs> well, I have a story that I think is even worse than that. Okay, let's see it. Today, I effed up by finding the love of my life. And when she went in for the kiss, I gave her a firm handshake. Pleasure doing business with you. Some backstory. I met this girl when I was taking a few summer courses to complete my remaining credits for my bachelor's degree. Oh, how ironic the name is. I assume OP is a big boy bachelor. Big bachelor. I was drawn to her right away because she has an exotic Slavic sounding name. For the sake of anonymity, we'll call her Svetlana. Svetlana. Ooh. She was radiant. She was beautiful, silent, and distant like the northern lights flowing in the sky. And like most people who aren't used to seeing the northern lights, I'd often catch myself just staring at her like an idiot. I was lost in thought. I guess the only difference is that the northern lights don't get weirded out when you stare at them for extended periods with your mouth hanging open like a lobotomy patient. So that was one of my first mistakes. <laughs> This guy has quite a way of describing things. Yeah, yeah. This man's literally drooling over this lady. Anyways, I'd say nary a word to Svetlana, but wanted to find a way to get to know her outside of class. Okay. Where it was a bit less unwieldy to start up a conversation versus, Hey, tectonic shift is pretty sweet, eh? Do you like the red hot chili peppers? <laughs> So I had a stroke of genius, or so I thought. I would invite my entire class, which is pretty small, maybe 20 people, to go to the movies with the hopes that she would go too. And it worked. Hey! His dastardly plan worked. Uh -huh. She signed up on the Facebook group I created for the event. I know. I'm practically Rico Suave when it comes to putting on the moves. It was settled. She and I and about 10 people from our class were going to see a horror movie on Saturday. Perfect. Let the plan commence. F up number one. We get to the movies. Everyone's dancing awkwardly around the, oh, hey, now we're outside of class. And we're being forced to interact at a non-academic level situation, myself included. <laughs> We sit down in the okay. seats near the back of the theater, and I make sure I sit right beside my love, mi amor, Svetlana. Svetlana. I wasn't planning on anything particularly nefarious, but I figured it'd be a fun way to break the ice if I waited for a scary part and then grabbed her knee to scare the bejeebus out of her, which I imagined would produce a hilarious shriek followed by startling laughter and then long talks about our future life together as husband and wife. Yeah, that doesn't sound like the best plan ever. <laughs> What do you mean? That's perfect. Plan. That's, perfect. That's exactly how it'll happen. So there I sat, hand poised inconspicuously by my side, ready to pounce. Sure. Q F up number one. The scary part. It happened when a side character got hit by a monster and it startled me so badly that I tensed up and punched her in the effing <laughs> leg really freaking hard, like hard enough that she crumpled forward and almost hit her head on the seat in front of her. Stop. Great icebreaker her pal show her you're unpredictably violent particularly when startled i apologize profusely and svetlana assured me that she was okay but i knew i'd given her a macho man randy savage charlie horse and i <laughs> felt especially derpy i spent the rest of the movie wishing i was dead oh f up number two we left the movie standing outside the same group of classmates who didn't really know each other any better after having sat silently through a horror movie <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the thing about horror movies, dude, and like movies in general. You don't really get to know the person you're with. You don't at all. Terrible first date, but not terrible, but a little bit. If you want to get to know them. A little bit terrible. A little bit terrible. We dance awkwardly around the how do I say goodbye to a group of people that I don't really know situation, myself included. Do they really not know each other? Like, they go I mean, to school they, together. Yeah, but they just sort of like in class and then and I guess, you know, they're not really talking. Maybe it's like a college class, you know. All right, yeah. Svetlana said she'd be taking the bus home. And it turns out I was taking the same bus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. We hadn't really talked since I smashed her leg like the effing Hulk. So I figured this could be my chance to try to smooth things over. All right. We both get on the bus and I try to sit beside her casually as possible. Mm-hmm. And then I say something pretty stupid and vacuous like, hey, this is the movie. Pretty scary, huh? <laughs> So bad. So bad. I know. But she entertained my stupid and vacuous question. And we actually ended up having a really nice talk. She was into music. I was into music. (laughs) She liked hiking. I liked hiking. That sort of thing. That sounds like, oh, you watch The Office too? Wow, we're both so (laughs) cultured and unique. We're meant to be. We got to her stop and I said, this is actually only a few blocks from my place. You want me to walk you home? Nervous that I might be imposing too much. But she responded with, wow, really? No one has ever asked to walk me home before. That's so sweet. Nailed it. Still have a chance of salvaging this. Right. Q, F up number two. So I walk up to her house and the whole way we're talking about life, passion, the universe at large. We get to her house. And the night is perfect. It's warm, quiet, a gentle summer breeze through the oak trees, soft glow from distant streetlights. She says, well, this is my place. And we stand there looking at each other. She is rocking back and forth from her heels to her toes, looking at me almost expectantly. Mm, The look. And then she moves in a bit closer and she starts to lean forward. And I... Shake her hand. No! <laughs> Why? I shake her effing hand, ladies and gentlemen. Her eyes opened and her face contorted ever so slightly into a scowl of disgust. And I say, boy, I had a great night, Svetlana. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> or something equally stupid. And I turn around and literally run away. Like I said, Rico Suave, folks. I spent the rest of the run home wishing I was dead. Boy. F up number three. Oh. The big one. Our departure had been awkward enough by my fault alone that I basically couldn't bear to talk to Svetlana after that. About two weeks later, she posted in the same Facebook group, not a bad idea after all, advertising that she'd be hosting a barbecue at her place in celebration of us finishing our course. Hey. Perfect. I can prove once and for all that I'm not such a bumbling idiot. I was so nervous all day. My palms were sweaty, my arms weak, mom's spaghetti, and I couldn't eat anything. I put on my most stylish clothes and showed up trying to seem extra cool and aloof. Back to the story, right? Right away, this guy's having social anxiety. The place was loaded with like 60 people of whom I knew maybe four, including Svetlana. A few hours in, people started playing beer pong. Perfect, I thought. I don't drink regularly, but I'd spent the last year playing ping pong every day. I'm that cool. <laughs> so I knew the weight and flight trajectory dynamics of a ping pong ball, and I figured I would seize this opportunity to really impress her. Svetlana! I shouted, let's play beer pong. Same team. <laughs> to which she looked uncomfortable, but eventually said, Sure, I guess. And she walked over to the table with me. Perfect. And just as I suspected, I single-handedly dominated the first game against (sighs) two strangers. And I didn't even lose a single cup. Oh. However, because I don't drink, I'd never played beer pong and I don't know the rules. I thought the game was sort of prefunctory and the main purpose was to drink. So in a doubly stupid move, I said, don't worry, Svetlana, I've got this. And I downed all eight cups of booze. Turns out it wasn't beer. It was shots of hard liquor. But hell, I didn't care. I was riding the euphoric athletes high from my demanding victory of throwing a ping pong ball across a table. These guys' words are physically painful. I know. Who else? wants to get their ass kicked I said across the room (laughs) Svetlana was starting to warm up a bit and quietly chuckled two more people stepped up in quick order I dominated that game too and lost only one cup after the game Svetlana saw me reaching for the cup and grabbed my arm but I said don't worry Svetlana I got this and down all of my cups again. No. I could hear people snickering and speaking under their breath, but I ignored it. Come on. Who else wants a piece of me? That's piece of this spicy meatball. I taunted, feeling 10 feet tall and bulletproof. No, no, no. You should just sit down for a bit, warned Svetlana. Oh, hell no. You and me are going right to the top. I said, oh, I just think you should take a break for who wants to get stomped. <laughs> I interrupted. Two more strangers stepped up and I narrowly 
won the third game. Not quite as smoothly or impressively, but I won. Before she could stop me, I downed all of her cups again. She looked a bit amused and a bit concerned, but not as uncomfortable as she had 10 minutes ago. And then right in front center of my head, I started to feel warm fuzzies. Hide and seek, someone shouted from the living room. At this point, running on 24 cups, which must have equaled 12 to 16 shots of hard liquor on an empty stomach, hide and seek sounded like a great idea. Oh God. With 60 people in a one story house, whatever. Someone flicks off the lights and we all start running around like crazy people. Svetlana and I met abruptly at one of the door to one of the rooms. Ooh. We hear the dude who was it approaching. So we duck into the room, which was painfully bare and we were about to get caught. Svetlana grabs me at the sleeves and pulls me in the closet at the side of the room. And there we sat with the full moon beaming through the window and through the shutters in the closet door and the soft hum of bare naked ladies playing on the stereo in the living room. The gentle pitter patter of footsteps and the ambient giggling of hide and seekers outside. It was perfect. She looked at me. I looked at her. She leaned forward. I leaned forward and we kissed. It was a beautiful kiss. I leaned back, my heart a flutter and say, Svetlana, I just want you to know, I think you're no. And I puke. I puke right into Svetlana's slightly open mouth. Oh. I puke into her effing face and into her mouth. I puke so hard, in fact, that I almost pass out face down into her laundry bin. No. When I brace myself to catch my balance, I look at her and I am now tumbling down the metaphorical water well of complete unrecoverable intoxication. And I make a drunken observation. Ha, <laughs> Svetlana, your shirt's wet. Just, just why? <laughs> and then I realize what I'd done. I realize it's my puke all over her shirt and face and closet. I basically knock the closet doors off the hinges and stumble into her room and scream, someone needs to take me home right now. At least that's what I tried to scream. I got out. Someone needs to. And then I puke again hard all over Svetlana's bed, quilt, pillows, and night table. No. The shit was coming out of my mouth like it was a fire hose. <laughs> and I was trying to save City Hall. And then darkness. <laughs> That's where my memory stops. I woke up the next day face down in my room, completely naked with my door wide open. When I stumbled into the living room, feeling like someone had taken a crap inside my skull, I saw my clothes everywhere. My roommates later told me that someone had driven me home at about 3 a.m. and I was slamming on our front door with my shirt pulled over my head, shouting incoherently in basically only vowel sounds and Svetlana's name. <laughs> and when they opened the door, I ripped off all my clothes and hurled them around the house like a Tasmanian devil. Pants were on the fridge, shirt was in the stove, socks were in the sink, and one shoe was in the garbage, and the other shoe was never accounted for. Svetlana, if you're reading this, I'm so sorry things never worked out, and for puking in your mouth, and for punching you in the leg. Maybe one of the most painful, cringy stories we've, ev we've ever heard. Yeah, this is one for the books. This is absolutely one for the books. And just all of his ideas, like, even starting with the, like, oh, I'll, like, grab her leg and scare her, like, who does that? No one. No who one does, does that? that. You shouldn't throw that, but you know you should always do oh subscribe to okop follow us on spotify subscribe on youtube follow us on big doc and you want to be a real one support us on patreon that's right join the family joey sandra casey zephorius davina muhammad amanda will desiree keegan and kathy quigley see you soon entitled parents get mad because her child can't do anything they want okay op why why, why can't my child do anything like yeah, you know let steal me, your let money my child do murder yeah <laughs> What, murder. What? I want my child to murder you, stab you in the calf. <laughs> and, that okay. and that should be okay. And that should be okay. Why why is we why as we as a society cannot accept that? Why yeah, can't that honestly, be? Honestly, okay? I thought we were more progressive than that. I, I thought, but, but I guess but not. I guess not. I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> to be so <laughs> clear. Not a joke. I want my children to murder other people. Yeah, Sam's not joking. Yeah. Okay. This just happened yesterday, and it's a little short, but it's totally worth it. All okay. right. Just like uh, toddlers. A little short, totally worth it. And sometimes. my penis. Yeah. And, and my penis. A little short, totally worth it. Yep. Blow your world, baby. So we went to this small carnival with food stands and rides for the smaller kids. Um, my brother is 10, and I'm 14. This will be very important pretty soon. Okay. He wanted to go on the bouncy house for whatever reason. So we waited in line for a little, and my brother finally got in. However... Entitled mother and entitled kid comes along. Entitled kid says, Mommy, I want to go in. <laughs> Keep in mind, these are the ones that have slides, ladders, etc. Then the nice employee came along. He says in a calm voice, Ma'am, only one kid can go on at a time. She then says angrily, 
Shut the dog up. My child can do whatever he wants. He's my little angel. I was incredibly shocked. But since the employee is distracted, the kid went inside with my brother. My brother completed the course and got out. And the kid was almost done too. But instead of sliding down the slide, she slid down the ladder. How do you the, slide down a ladder? Uh, I do not know. I <laughs> Maybe do not like, know. like a, a fire pole style. Yeah. 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 Like kind of. Uh, um, the ladder had small bumps, kind of like speed bumps. Because of this, the kid goes flying oh. and hit the floor hard. Oh, my God. Ba-doom. Yikes. She was lucky that the bouncy house was big enough or else she would have hit the cement and broke her pelvis probably. Oh, my God. The entitled mother screams. Ah! At the guy saying, my precious daughter is hurt because of you. Bruh. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. But the employee said in a calm voice once more, ma'am, you need to leave the park now. She left and picked up her crying kid. I said to him, I'm so sorry you had to experience that. Please take this money. He said while smiling. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. That's cool. And then me and my brother walked back to the car with my mom and went home. I'm still wondering why people like that go in public or even breed at all. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Insane, bro. I can't if, be- you, if you let your children do whatever they want, they should experience the consequences of that, like breaking their pelvis. We should sue them. Yeah, let's sue them. <laughs> sue all the entitled children. <laughs> all the entitled children get up in court, class action lawsuit, uh, and the class action is uh, soap. They got it. You know, you know, the classic, you know, old, old, old. Uh, oh, uh, put, clean their soap. mouth with yeah, soap. Yeah, clean their mouth with soap. <laughs> let's run, let's run it back. There I we go. It. Ancient punishment. That's right. 